The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. This is a big day in the markets, folks. Huge anniversary date. This was the date that they had the ETs land in Roswell, New Mexico. Uh-oh, they crashed. They didn't land there. Anyway, uh, tomorrow we're going to have a special show between, uh, I think, at 3.30 when I'm doing the Tom O'Brien show. We're going to have Norm Winsky on, and some of you know this, but uh, Norm's um, brother, brother, <laughs> Norm's uncle Abe was uh, worked with Werner von Braun. He was the one that put those uh, rockets up there, and he's going to talk to us about some of the awards and share some of the pictures with Werner von Braun and then uh, some of the landings on the moon. If you could believe they're really there. Anyway, we'll uh, have him on, and then on Wednesday we're going to have Tim Bost. On Thursday we're going to have Stan Harley. So we got a full group of people this week to give us an idea of where we stand. Uh, the first chart that we posted, of course, usually we start with the DAX, as you can see. We went up there, rolled over just a tiny little bit, really nothing to make any uh, sense to yet. It's still quite early. You can see the ABCD patterns. If we take a look here at the FTSE, you'll be able to see that we did pretty much the same thing. Now, that swing uh, that you see there, we're stopped at 0 0.32, this little bit below the 382 level, uh, goes a little bit higher, but you're right up at that uh, uh, one point uh, uh, two seven expansion of that move, so that's why that one looks uh, pretty interesting. So that's going to be up. Uh, what's going to bring up? No, <laughs> no, he's not going to bring up any of that stuff from uh, uh, the 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 stuff from the the. Uh, uh, what do they call that stuff? For, with the, for, with uh, Hitler? No, that's not. Uh, he's his 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 father is an uncle. God darn it! His uncle Abe uh, was uh, Silverstein. I think is was his name. Uh, was very very famous. He was one that helped start NASA. So it's uh, you know it's really going to be interesting in how he did it. And he's got some. He's good. They're going to have some awards for him. And so that's one of the reason, you know, Norm went. And you know we really should listen to Norm, folks. I mean he yelled and screamed. Uh, at us when we were uh, up there on, on uh, July 5th, he he made a you know special thing that this is his biggest thing of the month, and so far that has been the high. Whether that's going to be anything or not, we'll have to be able to see. You know what? So that's what we're going to see. We'll do these one at a time. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's move on here to just a second here. We've looked at the DAX. We've looked at the. Uh, um, Oh, shucks. My, 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 I'm doing, people are Skyping me in between this talking, and it's just, it is really troubling, it's troublesome, so I need to turn off Skype so that I can think a little bit because it's not easy enough to do. The first question that someone has brought to our attention this week is on the Bitcoin. We'll bring this up here, and you'll be able to see that uh, we are in a very, very tight a triangle here you can see from uh, 13,900 down to 9,800. We're in this really tight triangle. I believe we're going to pop out on the upside on this for two reasons. Uh, the first reason and the most important was the fact that that low at 9,800 was right at a 382 retracement. And secondarily, it was setting exactly at a 61% retracement from the June low. So that's really powerful, folks. Anything below 9,800 would put this. Uh, I put a lot of negativity into Bitcoin, but right now it has all the earmarks that it wants to go higher. That's you know pretty much you know what we're looking at as as we see this uh, unfold. Now I did want to uh, bring I, since I've got to be on for two hours today, I tried to plan you know some of the things that I think will be interesting to you. Uh, and of course, at the at the uh, three to four show, I'm going to be talking about you know the way these Fang stocks are uh, acting and and some of the divergences that we're seeing. But I did want to go back in history just a little bit here uh, to just to show you a pattern that is uh, very very similar to what we have going on now. 
Let's get this up here. This is the uh, from the stock market, folks, from 1950 uh, all the way through, uh, you know, the uh, area of, um, of if, you, if you look over the left, that low that's down there, you know, that was uh, that was in uh, 1960, uh, 1963. November 1963, November 22nd. Uh, of course, after that, uh, that's a very famous day. That's when John Kennedy was assassinated. But the thing that I'm trying to point out to you here is if you look at that area of 1,000 in the Dow Jones, how it stood there from 1965 all the way through 1980. That's 15 years the market had one, two, three, four, uh, five tops, and then it finally broke through. And I'll show you the breakthrough on this because I think it's uh, it's relative relatively important. But uh, you'll notice that in 1970, 1972, you see how it was topping up there in 1973, and then went down into the October crash. Uh, that's the one that got me, folks. Uh, that's the one that uh, made me successful because if I hadn't learned that. I didn't learn anything. It took me a long time and a lot of money to figure out what I had done wrong, but uh, uh, that's what happened. After that, you went up to 1,000 again. Then we pulled back into uh, 1975. And remember, you know, remember 65 through 72, folks, that's the Vietnam War, and these markets are still going up, so it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. The real interesting one here, and I, I would like to, I want to show you this, if you'll notice the time period between 1978 and 1982, and you'll notice that arrow that I have there, that was August the 9th of 1982, that's when bonds turned up. The bonds became bullish right then. And that's when the stock market took off, too. And uh, the reason why I'm bringing these things together to you, if you'll see these little red arrows that are there, I want to show you what those red arrows look like when you're looking at them astrologically, okay? We covered this in the Bradley model a year ago. So here's what that looks like when you're watching something like that. That means that all of these planets at that particular time in 1974, they were, this is, this happens to be March 5th of 2009. I'm just trying to show you the relationships. You notice how all of these planets were lined up in the same area uh, of, the, of the transit chart? That's what happened in 1974. It happened twice. It happened once during October and once during December. October was the, the October crash of 1974. December was the double bottom. And both of those, both of those lined up perfectly to these planets all lined up you know, the same way, much like what we were looking at in uh, March the uh, 5th of uh, 2009. That's what we were looking at. Here, I'll bring this up so you can see it one more time. And thank you very much, Marshall, but Mercury does go retrograde today. Very, very important. That means try not to make too many decisions. But uh, if you notice, we had that three drive to a bottom there. There was the perfect bottom. And I, I mentioned uh, that this is going to be the biggest rally since 1938. And uh, it kept going and going and going. So it's been a pretty big rally. But anyway, that's the type of thing that got me interested interested into the astrology so much because we went and looked at all of those you know we, we it was amazing how these con, you know these things lined up but I don't have the key to it I mean I just look at the patterns and that's really it I don't see a whole lot uh, other than that you know okay let's move on to the next one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, on a little practical note, I posted a little picture of what's out on the uh, back patio this morning. Uh, you'll notice that little puppy sitting up there, that little bobcat. He weighs about 45 pounds, and he ran through the neighborhood uh, picking up uh, little dogs and cats at will. But uh, he's a terror of our neighborhood here, but he runs his own way. So <laughs> anyway, I let him sleep. I didn't bother him, as a matter of fact. These these bobcats, folks, they are really angry and mean little guys. I mean, you just uh, – and they walk through the street like, yeah, you better stay off my turf. So anyway, he was out there this morning, and we're having monsoons now, so that makes it a little more uh, difficult as we look at some of these things. Folks uh, – the main the main focus this week, from my perspective, looking at the charts, is you know we've got a possibility of a rollover here from some of those patterns that we've seen in the S and P. But I was listening to Steve Rhodes, and he was really giving a good a really good rundown of what the stock market's doing. And I have to agree with him. There's a possibility it could roll over from here, but you know it still has a bullish bias, uh, you know, that you have to really respect. But there is some divergences occurring now. The only thing that would turn this around to tell you that this is it is to have a really strong down day or up day in the stock market this week and that would really tell you that's the direction for the next two or three weeks uh, looking at you know what I'm looking at but whether that's going to be the case or not you know we have to uh, we have to wait and see um, there's been some news of course about Deutsche Bank we have a really one of our really uh, superior students over there in the, the land of the wind over there in Las Vegas has been following this very, very closely. Deutsche Bank came out and uh, said they've, uh, they've re they're firing 18,000 people. Boy, that's not good. And then they're also changing the way their income structure is coming up. But I wanted to bring the chart here of uh, Deutsche Bank up to take a look at it because you'll be able to see here that uh, th this is the real key of this whole chart, folks. Go, go back here and look in January of 2017 when Deutsche Bank offers their stock at a 35% discount. <laughs> now, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to stop and think about that one. You know, why are they offering you their stock at 35% discount? You know, give me a break, folks. I mean, when it looks too good to be true, I can promise you it is. 
So, and now you can see we went all the way down to $5 a share. We rallied up here about 25, 30%. We got as high as uh, eight and change, I believe, on Friday. The stock was up uh, almost uh, 6% pre-market early this morning, and then it reversed and went lower. So this stock has got a lot of problems. And you can notice the 1.618 expansion down there at uh, $5 a share. I think that's where it's going. And the, the, the German bank is not going to let this thing go under. But, uh, you know, they, they got lots of problems. The, the CFO, the chief financial officer for Deutsche Bank, was on Bloomberg real early this morning when I happened to be up. And... Uh, the, uh, you know, he was saying, gee, everything's looking great. You know, it's just really good. We're trimming payrolls and all that stuff. And the, the guy said, you're also trimming income. He said, well, we'll make that up. Yep. And that's right. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Bill. They're probably merged with Enron. But the, the key to that is, is to, you know, trade what you see and not what you hear or think. I mean, look at this stuff. Enron was one, another one that was the same way. They're, these happen all the time. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about General Electric, the same type of deal with General Electric, you know. And is Bill, is, um, uh, what's his name? What's his name, Welch? Jack Welch. Is Jack Welch still alive? I see his wife is advertising all the time, but I don't know if Jack Welch is still alive because he made some decisions that, that really put the put the, the skull and crossbones on uh, General Electric. But anyway, let's move on to a couple other markets that we're talking about here. Uh, these currencies, folks, are really uh, hanging on by a thread. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, a literal thread, a very small. We're having such a small bounce in the euro. I mean, it just doesn't want to get out of its way. And uh, it had a low due, and it, you know, the low has not come in yet. I mean, this, if this bounce that we're seeing here in the euro, uh, you know, that's it. Yes, he got out right when at the high of the market when that, that General Electric was up around 35 uh, bucks 36 and then it went down to five but he did get out at the top by the way folks you know we lost one of the greatest people in finance here uh, last week over in palm springs california lee iacocca 94 years old uh, he basically bailed out ford with his mustang in 1964 and he bailed out chrysler big time with the k cars and he was a really really nice guy a real gentleman and uh, he passed away over in uh uh, Palm Springs, California, and I had a friend go to the services just to see how many people were there, and there were about 40 people there uh, in Palm Springs, and uh, to 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 see him off, and uh, I, uh, I I would have thought there would have been hundreds, but that's not the way it goes. Anyway, uh, let's let's watch this euro, folks, because if the euro gets below 111. If if it gets below 111, I sent out the charts on the weeklies of the euro because it's so important. Below 1 111, really, it, it's got a 105 to 108, 105 to par t targets down there because 112 is the 61 percent retracement that's been here for seven months. So it's either making a, a tremendous bottom in here, which it certainly doesn't look like short term, but it's got a possibility of breaking down really, really big time and start to accelerate, too. Maybe in a currency war. I don't know. I mean, anything could happen, but it just looks very, very interesting. And on the reverse of that is the dollar index. You know, the dollar index looks like it, you know, stopped right where it should have with that perfect ABCD pattern that that we talked about last week. And we'll get that up here so you can see it very easily. We came out of here, you know, like a rocket, which is really good. And now we're we're floating it near that, uh, getting up near that 97 level, which I think we're pretty close to it today. And popping above that, then you you got the U.S. dollar really moving. So I don't know. I know there's talk about another uh, Brenton Woods agreement, you know, where we're going to change the price of gold or whatever they talk about. That stuff is two two levels beyond my pay grade but just look at the charts you know that's pretty much it below 111 that euro is not going to have many friends folks it just isn't and remember that's the second major currency in the world right behind the US dollar and when they do that dollar index 53% of that dollar index is the euro now the the Chinese renminbi uh, that's the renminbi that's always in the one uh, also known as the renminbi is also going on now remember there are some really serious things going on in Hong Kong you know that's uh, that's really uh, some now Peter's asking me are interesting 
transits oh set up for this month you know i don't go uh peter i really don't go out that far uh, because I, I look at the shorter term patterns because I can control the risk really good and I, that's really what I'm watching. So, uh, oh, Mr. Z is asking, what's the next big gold trade that I'm looking at? Mr. Z, you've got it. You've spot on, Bubba. Let me just show you what I like. I mean, it might not happen, but this is the one that I really like in the old gold. Let's get it up here and we'll put it up here. This is, uh, here, oh, we got the break coming up. What we'll do here is... Uh, uh, we will get this uh, uh, gold up here in a minute, but I will. I'll talk about it. Uh, I showed it. I showed the larger uh, chart here. We'll, we'll bring gold when we come back. I'm sorry, folks. Mumbling too much. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, let's take a look at this gold chart. This is a real interesting one. Four hours. You can see the last, uh, we got this big ABCD hanging out there that looks uh, just about as perfect as Mr. Gartley could ask for. Uh, and the reason why it looks so good, folks, uh, if you're looking from 1441 down to 1380, that's 60 bucks. You know, it's really close to the $64 harmonic number. It's also an ABCD pattern. It's also a 382 retracement off of the low that we made way back in May. 
at that triple bottom. Uh, that, <laughs> that's Mother God and Country, Gartley said on page 222 of his book. Be sure to look to buy ABCD, the first ABCD moves in the bull market, and also to sell the first ABCD uh, patterns in a bear market. And so that's what we've got there. Remember, we had that same thing in corn, and we missed it by uh, half a penny. And uh, corn took off, and now it's trading 26 cents higher than uh, uh, where it left the gate. Unfortunately, the the gate they didn't get my ticket open, so I missed the corn. But maybe the maybe the corn maybe the um, the uh, gold will get there. Uh, the low we made last uh, uh, last week was at uh, 13. Um, uh, 89 and below that would get us down to that 1379 1380 level is what I'm looking at and that should be very good support folks gold has had increasing open interest all during this time this has been very bullish new players are coming in both on the long side and the short side so that's a very very positive thing going on not to say what's going on in the treasury notes and treasury bonds where you've had decreases in open interest during the last two weeks that's that's very bearish and uh, at least that's what it usually is in the history of looking at these things but uh, that's uh, that's neither here nor there someone's asked me to uh, to review that corn thing because uh, that always uh, makes you feel so nice and warm when you miss something like that you'll get this up here to take a look at it get here to take a look here we go here uh, there's the corn. You can see here that uh, that level we were looking at, right, was around little red little red dot over there on the right there at uh, 420 and a quarter. Uh, that we took out we took out the, the gap area from uh, May the uh, 30th, and uh, <laughs> but it went a penny below that gap and then turned. And I'm trying to buy it at uh, 14 uh, 20, and it gets to 14 20 and a quarter, 12 dollars and 50 cents. It's now trading uh, a little better than uh, $1,250 higher this morning. It looks like it's got more to go to the upside, but that's neither here nor there. You can't get it. You can't get all of them. Remember what Grandma said: when you go out into that swamp and looking for the old uh, princess, you got to kiss a lot of frogs, and sometimes uh, you're going to have to do that. That one doesn't work. I really enjoyed the uh, quote that uh, David. White posted about uh, uh, the Ray Dalio of, Bridge, of Bridgewater, uh, and he says, uh, <laughs> he said, investment is an intuitive process. You make your bets, fail sometimes painfully, learn something new, and try again. During this struggling process, you improve your own decision-making by constant trial and error. This principle obvious to us since Darwin sheds light into the way nature works. It is also true for investing decision-making. I would like to add to this that what we do in trading, folks, is exactly, I mean exactly, what happens in the medical perfection. Any of you ever went to the doctor, and when you went into the doctor's office, right on the front door of the doctor's office, it says, Dr. Maury Leibowitz, dermatologist, practice of medicine. Practice of medicine, there's the key. Go to the doctor that says, Maury Leibowitz, I'm practicing dermatology, and I don't have to practice anymore. So keep in mind that that practicing is what you do because trading and medicine have two things in common, patience. You have to have both of those in order to succeed. And the last one is more difficult than any of the others because trading is all about the knowledge. It doesn't make any difference how much capital you have. The capital is all baloney because you can. I've seen people with lots of capital lose a lot of money. And I've seen people with very little money make a lot of money. But uh, you got to have that patience in order to do it. And that's one of, you know, hey, I fight that just like everybody else. It's no big deal. You know, that's just one of the things that you have to do when you're when you're doing this. So that's neither here nor there. So anyway, that number that we're talking about in the gold comes in around 1389. Uh, uh, excuse me, 13, uh, 1379, 1380. Um, we have the uh, the solar eclipse and new moon. We've got Mercury retrograde today. So that Mercury retrograde, folks, uh, basically what 
the, the you know we'll have Tim Bost on uh, we'll have we'll have Norm on tomorrow and ask him we'll ask Tim Bost too on Wednesday Mercury retrograde is about communications you're not supposed to sign any contracts or anything like that when Mercury's during retrograde and I don't know Marshall when does it come off retrograde it's usually about 20 days isn't it I don't even I'm looking at it here to see if I can find it this, you know, Peter from Park City, you asked me about the transits for the week. That that's the reason why I don't go out because that that might affect me. That I think is something happening big. And then if I see something in the Bradley model, then yeah, I'll take a look at August first. Okay, so we're in there. It's about two and a half weeks, right? Yeah. See, one, two, oh, three weeks, almost four weeks. Okay, how many days is it? Yeah, about thirty days. So it's going to be in there a little under thirty days. That it'll be out and August 1st. And remember, remember the Bradley model has a big date now. That's August 25th. That's the anniversary date of the crash of uh, or the top of the market in 1987 when we had harmonic convergence. That's that. That's the Bradley model that we've been watching. And remember, the Bradley model is far from perfect, but when it's working, and when it's working, it works pretty good. So we'll keep an eye on it to see what's going on. Right now, the market is extremely quiet, showing no sign of any imminent uh, big drop of any kind. But uh, you know, these are the kind that can be the most scary. The thing that I watch is the fact that we went up into those triple tops, took them out, and didn't go screaming ahead is a little bit troublesome. And not only that, when we broke out to the upside in the stock index futures, there was not a corresponding increase in open interest in these things. So there were not a whole lot of players wanting to play up in that area. At least that's what it looked like you know, when we were first watching these things. So let's keep a keep a close, close eye on it. Let me double check. We've got a break coming up here. I want to check to see what the markets are doing. Uh, yeah, we have a, we've been negative uh, to, to the stocks. I still believe bonds are, are going to go a whole lot lower. Crude oil's made some type of a, of a major bottom down in here, folks. We saw that yesterday or on Friday when we hit that 382 level and the market just literally had a uh, – really nice uh, you know move uh, to the upside so those are just a few of the ones that we're watching but of course the euro you've got to watch it we're trading at 112 uh, 17 right now we get a below below 111 is a long way away I mean it's a whole a whole handle away but we below 111 in the euro boy it's big time trouble and it's so oversold I mean we've been coming down here now for what nine days now in the euro with no bounce so it's due for a bounce but the bounce has not come as of yet so Let's uh, you know keep that on our plate to watch too, because when that euro does go below one level, which I think it will, you're going to see a big move, it's three four thousand dollars easy. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, self 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, contrary to popular belief, I'm going to do, go down to, hey, very good, Maria. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. You just saved the old cowboy's bacon. Uh, here's the chart that uh, uh, she's referring to. You'll notice here we were at the 78% level here in the E-mini S&P at the uh, 2976 level. The problem that I'm seeing here is we've got these ABCD patterns sh uh, shooting about 10 cents lower, uh, 10 handles lower down around 2966, 2970. So that's what I would be looking for. But this could hold right here. It's uh, it's spot on. Very very important. Below 2974, uh, I would think that this pattern has failed, and you'll be looking at uh, a market getting ready you know, to uh, to go a, a whole lot lower. It's interesting if you'll look at this uh, chart here uh, from Ensign Software, it's very interesting. Uh, maybe you can't see it because the, the numbers are so small, but uh, it also shows you the swings. In other words, the swing down from July 5th was uh, 35 handles. And then the swing that we're looking at uh, so far today is 75 handles, twice that. So that's why this support is so very, very important. Because if it doesn't hold, um, we're heading down another 10 handles. And that doesn't mean it's going to stop there because there could be, you know, a bigger, bigger move that has occurred because you can't get every swing. There's just no other way. Uh, to do this is to get micro, you know, you've got to micromanage it because uh, to keep your risk as small as as you possibly can. Now, I don't watch the the the, the monitors all day long. I could I couldn't do that anymore. And a, I don't want to do it, and I probably can't do it because it's just too too much going on. So I look at four or five different things, you know, that I like to see. You know, I'm basically feeling that since we've had these lower tops on this smaller chart, I was bearish the S&P, uh, bearish the gold, uh, bullish the crude oil, because crude oil on Friday made a perfect 38% uh, retracement down there at 56 and change and took off like a stripe of deer, and uh, it's still going higher. They're going to have some resistance up around the 58 and a quarter level in the uh, uh, crude oil, but right now, it doesn't look like it. Uh, it, you know, it's it's just acting quite nicely. Let's just uh, let's just uh, put it that way. Uh, someone's asking a question about. <laughs> oh yeah, they're asking about uh, the the old. Uh, they asked me what the biggest problem was when I went to work for Drexel Burnham Lambert. If I told you what it was, you'd probably laugh at me. And that was finding a parking place. And that's that's really that's really what it was. You you know that four-story building right there on Rodeo and Wilshire. That b building was owned by a I believe it was a doctor, and then Milken brought it bought it in '76 when I first went to work there. He'd already owned the building, 
So uh, that's it. Le uh, Mr. Z's uh, uh, hosting margarita parties. No, it's going to be about 103 with monsoons coming in here. We only have margaritas on uh, either Friday or Saturday. There's no alcohol on Sunday or any through the week unless Marshall and Lynn are in town. Then we break the code a little bit. But I don't drink alcohol very much at all. And I certainly don't drink it on a trading day because just the slightest little bit at my age, you know, the old kidneys don't uh, put out the old material like it used to so you've got to be really careful you can have a hangover with just one uh, with one margarita but i maybe drink two a month but um, let's get back to the uh, biggest problem with drexel was was finding a parking place because the they had some underground parking in the building no customer parking at all and all the underground parking was milkins guys because they started getting in there around four o'clock in the morning, and uh, it was really hard. The only way you could had you had to go to the structural parking uh, two streets over on uh, was it Linden? I can't remember. But they had some uh, public parking there. Most of the Drexel employees would park there, and uh, then they'd go to work and stuff. But I figured how to do it, and the, the way I did it was there was a beautiful uh, homes right there. Uh, this is south of Wilshire Boulevard, so it's a uh, it was a little easier. Uh, not north of Wilshire is where all the all the movie stars and the real expensive stuff is, but the homes there at that time were around 200 grand, and uh, uh, one about a half a block away from there on the south on the south side of Rodero, a lady uh, was there. She had a beautiful circular driveway, and she lived there by herself. And uh, my my secretary, Connie, told me about it. She said, go over and talk to her. So I went over, and I said, you know, I worked there, and I said, I really have a hard time parking here in the morning. I said, can I pay you to, uh, you know, to pay me park? I said, I got a really nice sports car, so it wouldn't be, you know, derogatory. And she said, well, she said, no one ever uses it. And she says, I don't even have a car anymore. So I parked there for two years. Uh, free of charge, and it was real easy. And then, unfortunately, uh, she passed away, and I had to do something else. But uh, by that time, we had uh, figured out a way to get around the parking. But anyway, that was my biggest problem at Drexel, folks. That was so easy working for them, let me tell you. That, that was the smartest decision I ever made. I didn't even want to do it when I first started to talk to those folks. I didn't want to be a broker, but they had all the customers for me. They had all the accounts. All I had to do was put in the orders. And uh, this was when we were charging $50 commission. Now, what are you guys paying now? Anybody out there paying 50 bucks? Or you're paying about one-tenth of that, maybe $5 in and out? So that's uh, that's what it was, folks. It was not a uh, not an easy gig at that time. So that was a, it was a big thing. A buck and a half. See, there you go, Mr. Z. You know, you got it down to a science. Rich, Rich still gets fifty bucks for some of his accounts because he he handles their money. But uh, it's uh, you know, this is a big difference. And not only that, you have electronic trading. Oh my God, you're just like a floor trader, and better than a floor trader because you don't have out trade. You don't have an out trade clerk. You don't have to worry about someone stiffing you on the other side of the trade. The only problem that we have is the internet because if anything happens to that. And then we're all in big trouble. We got to go back to, uh, yeah, no more runners, that's for sure. But anyway, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. The way I worked when I was on the Merc was I watched those runners because when the runners came in, that means orders were coming in and you were trading against the public. When there were no runners, you were trading against the locals in the pit, and those guys were scalping for a quarter point or whatever it was. So you really didn't have to worry. So if you had a Fibonacci number there and the runners stopped coming in, you knew that, hey, there's a lot of resistance here, and that's it. Sell, Mortimer, sell. That's right. <laughs> Got to love that movie. One of my – well, there's a lot of favorite parts of that movie. I told you one, of course, with the uh, – yeah, when he was uh, saying, oh, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Remember when he was on the – when he was in, in jail, and he says, do you know who you're messing with up on the ninth floor in cell number four? That was I, – I really – I really – what a what a great movie. The 80s were wonderful movies, folks. Uh Incredible, the number of wonderful movies we had during the 1980s. But we'll see what's going on. Yep. Well, the broker takes the other side of the trade in all Forex, Ruby. You can bet your sweet bippy on that. I know that because I worked on both sides of that fence. Uh, uh, but they do do both sides of the trade in, in that. And they should, too, because it's uh, they know the public is going to lose, uh, you know, about 80% of the time until you learn to know what you're doing. And then you'll make a living at it. 
like that quote that David uh, White uh, posts about Ray Dalio. He has what, what, $35 trillion that he trades or whatever it is? Not that much, but a lot. And he makes a lot of mistakes. And we all do. Heck, if you don't make mistakes, pal, you're, you're dead. That's why those four those four big uh, fears are always silly. You know, fear of losing money, you better get used to that. Fear of missing out, you better get used to that. Fear of uh, uh, leaving money on the table, you better get used to that. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, let's uh, keep an eye on this major support here that Maria in the Den posted, uh, the E-mini 2975. That's been the low so far, right at the 78% level. And below that is not very good. That tells you you're going to go about 10 handles lower uh, would be my guess. Uh, also, uh, we're going to uh, be on the show today between 3 and 4 p.m., uh, setting in for Tom O'Brien. I'll, I'll have some all new material for that because I think it's important that we look at some other things that are going on in the stock market be besides the stock index futures. We'll update them, of course, 
uh, at that time. But we'll look at the uh, some of the other things that that do have an interest uh, in these markets. So uh, keep in mind that I'll be on all week, uh, three to four for uh, Tom O'Brien this week. And we'll have some guests on Stan Harley, Tim Bost, and of course, Norm the Wizard Winsky will be on tomorrow, and he'll be talking about his um, uncle Abe Silverstein, who helped started um, the uh, NASA with uh, Werner von Braun. Anyway, let's keep an eye on those things, folks. The key this week is the euro. Watch the euro because if we get it above 114, it's on its way up. If we go below 111, which is the bias, uh, I would be thinking that we'll most probably be heading down, you know, towards that level of, uh, uh, you know, 108 to 105 uh, in the euro because it could easily break to that level. Let me post this weekly, and you'll see what I mean here, folks, because it's uh, it's got some really serious numbers down here. If you'll take a look here. Uh, we're looking at 108 to 105. You can see that really clearly. And not only that, but look, folks, we've been at this 61% retracement now here for well over two months. And now we're trading right at 112. So you see 111. Once below 111, boys and girls, this thing's not going to have any friends. It doesn't have many friends as it is now, but uh, this could really, you know, head it lower. I don't know if that means much or not, but we'll have to, uh, you know, keep an eye on it. But that's the that's the key one this week, in my opinion, is to watch that. And also, if we if we were to have a big move down in stocks this week, this would confirm uh, at least a tradable top. Uh, in the stock indices. So those are the ones that I'm uh, paying close attention to as well as some of the others. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Music.